Welcome to Learning with Jay. And what it is, is all of these videos that I'm gonna be doing are teaching you something. So it's what I've learned, and I'm still learning anyway, so don't worry about it. Doesn't mean once you've learned something, doesn't mean that's the end of it, you've mastered it all, because times always change. So in this series of Lessons with Jay, I'm gonna be showing you how to do upholstery, things around business, and some motivational stuff, because I think we all need that from time to time. So, thank you for tuning in. Sit down, have a cup of coffee, get your notepad out, because I'm gonna talk a lot, and you know I do talk a lot, and you can make some notes and then send an email with regards to what you thought after, all right? Welcome to the lesson that's all about marketing for small creative businesses. And what that basically means is just a whole load of marketing. If you don't know about marketing, do not worry, sit down and I'm gonna to explain to you what I did for my marketing of my business. And you could apply some of it or some of the stuff that you might already know, you can just tweak it a little bit, but it's all about marketing and it's basically getting yourself out there. How do you market what you're doing? Because what you're doing is creative to you how do other people buy into it? They only buy into it if they know about it, and then that's how you market yourself. So this one, this series, this video, whatever you want to call it, is all about marketing. If you was expecting ballroom dancing, I think that's the next video. But this one is definitely marketing. What does marketing mean to you? And obviously you can't answer that question, can you? It's impossible, but I can. What marketing means to me, it's everything. Marketing is all about your brand. Marketing is about what message you're trying to send out there. So if you've got a brand, let's say for instance, your brand is about sustainability. So one, you have to live sustainability. Two, you then have to explain and educate people about sustainability, and then also fold that into your brand. That's what basic terms of marketing is. It's about how you get your message of your creativity out there to the big wide world, okay? Now, I bet you're asking yourself, at what point do you decide that you're gonna do marketing? And marketing your brand, whatever you're creating. You should have thought about that from the beginning. Really and truly, marketing is, you could do market research and understanding who's out there already competing with you or you're competing against them. And then also how you're gonna market yourself completely different. So marketing for me comes in right at the beginning. So you have to understand who's out there first and foremost. So you do your market research, that's where you analyze who's already there. Then you look at your brand, and are you gonna copy them? Now if you copy them in the same kind of marketing, you might not get the same customers because you're coming in after them. If you market yourself completely different, then you're gonna attract different customers. It's understanding who you wanna to sell to. With my business, what I did was I looked at the price range of what I was selling my furniture for. And then I looked at my competitors, such as Hills, um, DFS, Ikea, those are the guys that I was competing against. Not anybody that was in the upcycling world. And I looked at how they marketed themselves in magazines, going with bloggers or influencers nowadays is what they would call, call them. Um, and that's what I decided to do. I decided to market myself in exactly the same way as the big boys. So the same way that they bring out um, a couple of collections every year, so they'll have a, a spring, an autumn, and a winter, and all that kind of stuff. That's exactly what I did. Even though I was small, and I still am small, it's a case of why not act big? Why not market yourself the same way as the big boys? If you do it the way that everybody else is doing it in your kind of um, industry, you're just gonna fold into everybody else. So you should be looking at how you can market yourself the same way as the big boys, and without the cost. That's very, very important, because marketing can cost a lot of money, but you can do it really, really cheaply um, by doing it yourself. What I analyzed about the creative market that I was in is there wasn't many people doing what I did, and that was good, because basically my kind of slant or the way that I do furniture is this, it's just quirky, it's using leftover material, not really having an abundance of material to work with, that could be paint, that could be wood stain, that could be material, uh, like fabric, and just working with it. But what I noticed about the people that I analyzed, because remember, I'm analyzing the big boys, my market research, I looked at all of those big guys, and what I realized with them, they had abundance. They had money to die for, they had resources to die for, 
But what it made me realize is that then I have to get very resourceful with what I had, the limited stuff. So I had a phone, that was my camera. Still even to this day, I take all of my pictures on my phone. If you pay for a photographer, can be quite a bit. But what you do need is you need a space. So I've got a space like this, which is just painted all one color. That's my backdrop. And then I have my furniture and then I put something else in. I saw what the big boys were doing. They would have photo shoots. And then sometimes they're spending 10, 20, sometimes 30 grand on a photo shoot. I know, that's a lot of money. For a small business like myself, I haven't got that kind of money. I've got a phone, I can take a picture. And as I can take a picture, I've just got to make sure I stage it right. And that's what I learned from them. Copy them, but do it at a cut price. So after I'd done my market research, I then had to take some action. And the reason why I took the action is because I want to sell my products. If you want to sell, you've got a market. And one of the things that I decided to do is use what I had. So using the phone and creating some really quirky images, first of all. And I took loads of pictures. I mean, you, you wouldn't believe how many pictures I took. And a lot of those pictures you haven't seen because they're quite rubbish, actually. But the pictures that I really liked, I kept on duplicating the same image. So I would put a different chair in there or a series of chairs. I had a backdrop that worked really, really well. And luckily for me, I was in an old derelict building in Wolverhampton that was really run down. And then once you put a beautiful piece of furniture right there, take a picture, bam. It's cool because the image is really important. That's what people go for. People will go for that kind of feel. If you get something that looks good in an image, you can then imagine it in your house. And that's what marketing is. You're trying to entice, just like you're throwing out the bait to someone to say, this is something that would interest you. And as it would interest you, would you put this into your house? If you would put this into the house, you're then more than likely committed to buy something. So the way you stage your imagery or whatever you're selling is super important. And the reason why I say that, when I was doing some market research, I was not only looking at the big boys, I looked at the photography of some people in my industry who were selling stuff a little bit cheaper than me, but were doing the same thing. And some of the imagery that I saw there, people, they were very limited with their space. Um, and if this is someone out there listening, I bet you've grown up since this image went out. But basically what they would do is they'll take a picture in their front room and they'll have whatever they've made there. But beside it, you would have what they had for breakfast. You would have a magazine that was just kind of, not staged, but just like half open. It looked quite messy. So my eye was drawn to all of the other stuff around the room apart from that image. So what you would see when I take a picture, I love to have just the chair. You might have a picture, something like this in the background, that's a focal point. So you only really have two or three or five images um, that are there for you to focus on. To take a picture where there's a whole load of other stuff, nobody does that and it gets too messy. So you must make sure that you market what you're marketing. If you're marketing what you had for breakfast um, this morning, yeah, cool, that's what you're selling. But if you're selling something you've made, especially if you're creative, you want people's eye to go straight to that and also for them to imagine it in their house. And that's what staging's all about. I bet you're wondering and asking, what results did I achieve? Now when I'm done my market analysis, I've looked at all those competitors and then I've kind of copied them, I've took my imagery. What did I achieve? Well, I had some beautiful pictures. And then I did the one thing that I could afford to do, which was go to social media. It's absolutely free. And basically what I did is I posted up the pictures put a little caption underneath there and just explain. If you look at my early stuff on social media, you will see that all of my imagery all looked the same and it had the same kind of um, text underneath it. Also, hashtags. Hashtags were really, really important at the time. I think they still are, but I'm a little bit out of touch with hashtags because once you reach a certain stage, you don't need to hashtag as much. But as you're growing, hashtag, hashtag, and then hashtag. But what I did with those images, I posted them up and consistently I was posting up twice a day and I did it in the morning so I would get it out of the way. That was the one thing that I do religiously. Now, um, I kind of still do the same thing. I try to post up before 12 or some people say you should post up at about, um, I think it's one o'clock and then also six o'clock or eight o'clock. But really I like posting up early in the morning so I can get on with the rest of my day. And then if I'm gonna post up again, it'll be around lunchtime. But what happened, the result of me posting up those pictures is I was 
gain an interest from loads of different places. So from magazines, from newspapers, a lot of people look at social media, especially if you're hashtagging in the right way and it's hashtagging related to whatever you're designing in some way, shape or form. Those people that are doing magazines are always looking at for new things, new kids on the blog, who's doing something creative. So they'll pick you up. And then also for me, what happened was I got um, approached by a number of interior designers and those are international interior designers. So some people were doing work in Shanghai, some people were doing work in the O2 Arena, um, boutique hotels. Once they saw what was going on, because remember, if you use Pinterest or you use Instagram in a way to get your creativity, so are those interior designers. So are those people that are writing these magazines and newspapers. So they're looking out for what's there. So if you post up your stuff, free of charge, remember, it's a case where you'll get picked up, then next thing you know, you're in a magazine. And if you're in a magazine, then what happens is, other people are going to want to find out about you or you might come into contact with someone who's an interior designer or someone in your field depending on what your creative business is but i can only speak about mine that's why it's super important if you have any questions for me make sure you jot them down and then i can answer those and a kind of follow-up okay now sometimes you're going to get things wrong and people often ask me hey, you've done all this marketing what didn't work for you and I say nothing. Even when things went wrong, I learned from the mistakes. And that's what you should be doing. So you shouldn't see it as going wrong. I believe personally that every mistake that I've made is a beautiful mistake because it's taught me how not to do it again. So you have to try something before you realize, oh, it's working or it's not working. And if it's not working, you can identify why it hasn't happened and why it hasn't worked for you. But it doesn't mean, in my eyes, it doesn't mean it's gone wrong. It just means you need to adjust it a little bit. It's a bit like a sailor. You know when he's on and he's got sails, he hasn't got a motor, but like he's adjusting his sails and he starts moving forward. Then the wind changes. And then all of a sudden he's, he's just standing still. That's exactly the same with marketing. You could do something that might work for three months, six months, could even work for a year, but then you have to change. You have to change because the wind has changed. If you look at what's happened to us over the past two years that we've just had, things had to change. If no one had a visible presence on the web, their business was done. It was folded. Because basically, if they only concentrated on the business that was on the high street and they didn't adapt quick enough or they didn't do it before the pandemic, who's on the high street? No one. What's happened to their business? It's folded. Simple. So you do have to change and it isn't a mistake. So some things do go wrong. No one wins in life all the time. Well, I don't think so. I don't think, no, I don't think anybody wins all the time. Things must go wrong. And if they go wrong, if you see them as going wrong, they're gonna get you down and you're gonna live in that world. Don't, see it as something needed to change. And you can identify the change and then just apply it. So marketing for me is really, really important because it's flexible. I can tell you my experiences of my marketing and what I've done and you've seen the results. I started with probably, I think about, let's say about 100 people following me on Instagram. And then through the marketing and just through networking with different people, it was a case of it started to boost up. And how I did that was I liked other people's posts. I then commented on those posts. I was very complimentary to other people. And that's the way it is. I think social media is supposed to be social. If you just go on there and you're only posting up about your stuff and you're only liking your stuff, not many people will share the same love with you. So remember, change, there's no mistakes in marketing as far as I'm concerned, and also look at your market. See who you're selling to, who's out there selling already, and adapt things to the best way that you can, which is the most affordable. Us as small creative businesses, we don't have much money. We don't have a massive cash flow. We can't do these massive campaigns that are either on TV, magazines, or newspapers. So what's the next best thing? Your phone with a camera on it, a good one, and then also, social media. But the other thing I wanted to say to you guys is this. If you are taking pictures, every time before you take a picture, please, please clean your lens. That's one of the biggest marketing tips I could ever give you. Clean your lens. So the main tips that I will give you guys in marketing is looking to do things like the big boys, but do it cheaper a lot cheaper. So let's say for instance, you can't paint a wall like this. You're in your house or you've got a flat, you've got a studio, you've got something really basic 
and you can't paint it all one color. Why not get a bed sheet? A double spread bed sheet and just pin it from one side to the other, really tight across the wall. There's your backdrop. And you can even put one on the floor. And you know what it looked like? You've got a studio. But then when the mates come around, fold it all back up, bosh, you've got a house again. So the tips are to look at the creative ways. And because you're a creative business, look at the creative ways that you can get your message out there. I've seen a number of products on the uh, market at the moment where you can have a little photo booth like it just pops up, especially if you're making something that's quite small, like jewelry or whatever, you can just pop it up, put all the lights on it, take a picture, boom, and then it's done and dusted. And you can do that on your kitchen table. So really get creative. For me, I've got a window right beside here. And the reason why I painted this area, because the light comes in, turn it all off, it casts the shadow that then puts the focus onto that. Work with what you've got. And everybody can do that. Everybody, I, th I think personally the biggest tip is photos. Look at the photos you're taking, how they're positioned, and make sure they are consistent. So if you're making a number of different items, make sure they're all in the same position or got the same backdrop. That's the thing, consistency is a must until um, it needs changing. Rather than it going wrong, it needs changing, that's all.